texting his phone to another female. What did the text say? I came by your house today and you didn't answer the door. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. High school sweethearts Patrice and Curtis met six years ago, married after graduation, and soon had a beautiful daughter. But now, he claims she's nothing but a gold digger, and she asserts he's no more than a jealous control freak, and both vehemently want out of the marriage. When I'm spending $500, three and $400, it's fine. We it's can fine. eat good, it's, it's, it's fine romantic. then. But when we get back home, it's nothing. I get a text message. Um, if you want to continue your family locator, they'll pay $9.99 a month. I'm like, this man got a track on my phone. Curtis is ready to free himself of his money-hungry wife. Today on Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Mr. Curtis Sloan Glenn and Patrice Price. The two of you have been uh, married for three years, but separated for the last year. You have one daughter with Ms. Price. Mr. Uh, Sloan Glenn, you have brought Ms. Price here seeking $750, which you say is the amount that you paid toward the purchase of a 1996 Pontiac Grand Am that's in your wife's possession. Uh, before we get to that, however, I want to start uh, with you, Mr. Glenn, why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're here in divorce court today? Well, uh, in the beginning, when we first got together, you know, we met, it was kind of like love at first sight. I mean, uh -huh. I loved her, everything was going good. Um, but over time, it took a drastic turn. I mean, Patrice turned into this selfish, self-centered um, type of woman that I didn't know in the beginning. For an example, um, after we got together and everything was going good, we moved into an apartment together. Uh huh. And um, I was getting government assistance because I was going to school and I was getting veterans benefits. And um, for some reason, my benefit came late. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't able to really pay the bills and stuff on time like I was supposed to and I was had the only income in the house. When Patrice got wind of this and she found out what was going on, she gets on the phone, she calls down to Chicago to her family and tell them how she's leaving me here and I can have this house and she's going to leave me into this situation that's going on and move to Chicago back home and Ms. leave Price, me. He got one late check and you going to roll? Is that what happened? No, ma'am. That is not true. Will you tell me your version of that event? Well, Your Honor, Curtis is a liar. Curtis been lying since we've been together. First and foremost, I did not get mad because he didn't get his check. He told me he was getting his check, correct? And when he did get it, but he paid the rent late. So we got a notice. Uh-huh. We got a five-day notice, and then he didn't want to pay the late fee, so they kept adding on, adding on to the next rent and the next rent. So I told him, yeah, I did tell him, like, I am going to move to Chicago. I don't have time for this. Doesn't that seem a little drastic? He's, he, he's behind on a, on a bill. It, 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 maybe he didn't take care of it, but I, that's it, I'm moving? Is that, is that the appropriate exactly response when a, exactly when a spouse happened. is kind of screwing up on something? He, it's just because he was lying, and I, I hate lying. liars. No, I wasn't, like, I wasn't a lying. Lie, when you lie to me, it's a big turnoff to me. I okay. wasn't lying to you. I got you, I got you. And I do want to acknowledge Ms. Sherney Stewards, Stewards over there. You are a witness for Ms. Price, and I'm going to get to you momentarily. I just want to make sure you knew I knew you were there. <laughs> Mr. Glenn, why don't you uh, tell me what other concerns or problems that you have? Other concerns Price? that I had, Your Honor, I took Patrice. I spent $500. Uh -huh. That's I took a lie, Your up Honor. To, no, it's not. I took Patrice up to Lake Geneva. Me and her went up to Lake Geneva, and we was going to be romantic and everything like that. Okay, everything was fine. It was mm -hmm. good. Paid like $200 for the hotel. She ate up $90 worth of food. So everything was fine until we get back to Milwaukee. It's the same old Patrice. She's sleeping in the other room. She At night, we get ready to go to bed. She's putting wool clothes on. She don't want to lay with me. She don't want to do any of that. I'm like, okay, when I'm spending $500, three and $400, it's fine. We it's can fine. eat good. It's, it's, it's fine then. But when we get back home, it's nothing. No money, no love? That's not how it went. Yes, it Tell is, me how it know. went. He paid 200 for the room. And do it look like I eat $90 worth of food? Yes, you, you, the, the food was $30 a issue. plate. I want you but, to address his concern. Okay, Your Honor, when we went back home, I found a text in his phone to another female. Uh-huh. 
So I have got turned off. I told him to go sleep in my daughter's room, mm -hmm. and I will stay in our room. I said right. put him out the whole house. I said, you go sleep in there. I what got did a text. the text say? The text say, um, he texted her. I came That's by your house. She's lying. I came by your house today, and you didn't answer the door. Oh, my She texted God. back, I'm sorry. Um, I was kicking it with my brother oh, all day. Oh, my goodness. Then I go on his Facebook page. One day he was asleep. I go on his Facebook page and he telling his ex, yeah, I'm not with her no more. Um, I just here to take care of my daughter. I knew she wasn't the one for me and all this. Now yeah, I'm like, right. no, it ain't. you That's talking about true. me on Facebook Ms. to your Ms. ex? Mr. Glenn, have you been texting and no, Facebook? No, I have and... not. First and foremost, I want to say this first of all, if you want to talk about text messages, this lady sleep with the phone under her pillow. Not only is it under her pillow, it's in her hand under her pillow, and I can't see nothing that's going on. Now, she, okay, when I ask her what's going on in her phone and stuff like that, then, you know, I got to be this jealous and I got to be this stalker type of person you like that. Jealous. But she gets my phone, go all through my text messages, go through my missed That's calls, gets on my Facebook page. Listen, this lady changed her Facebook password six times in one week just He's because lying. I knew what the password was. But Miss Bryce, do you sleep in the bed with yes, the phone? No, you yeah, yes, lying. Yes, First, she do. when we got the Facebook pages, we um, said, you can't have no females on your Facebook unless it's family, and I can't have no males on my Facebook unless it's but family. But you had them. He had about like, oh, over half of his friends is female. Uh, bitch, my well, family. I can't do it. Why they would you family. tell me I can't do it? Because but they you're doing it. They right. was family. That, it don't go like that. They was family. Were there inappropriate messages? No. Yes. No, no, he told me it was a long lost friend. But she on there. He came to her house. It's about 15 messages up in there. I went to nobody's house. He went house, to every you know. each no, one of them girl houses. He went to every one of their houses. Yes. I knocked on your door. I called your phone. Why you never hit me back up? When Divorce Court continues, is Curtis being unreasonable? I want to know where you at, I want to know where my car at, and I want to know where that phone at. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222. Or visit our website at divorcecourt.com and become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Patrice Price, who claims her husband uses tracking devices to stalk her. But does Curtis have a good reason for his undercover behavior? You got some young man laying in my bed, eating my food, watching my TV. Ms. Stewart, why don't you come forward for a minute? It is apparent that Ms. Price has some trust issues with Mr. Glenn. Do you have any information uh, on, that, on that topic? Yes. Well, please mean. share it. This man, he go out and he have another baby on my sister. Oh, no. He long. Yes, yes, he he not, not only Lord. did he have another baby, that wasn't even the issue. You bring this lady to our church where y'all get married at, where y'all bow before God and the people that you so-called love, that you gonna stick by her side no matter what. He bring this lady to our church, she put a dollar in our offering plate, walk by with her baby, like they all good and like it's all okay. Yeah, my like daughter's on her baby sister. I almost took off my heels. I almost had to yeah, go honey. there. But you know, I have to remember. You didn't, you, you, you church. in church. No, yeah, you can't go there in church. The no, you can't go there because you know it ain't true. Uh -uh. You say that he's so bad, you feel like a hostage in your own home, Lord, and that he much. actually put yeah. a GPS on your phone. Explain that to yes, me. Yes, Your Honor. One day, me and Curtis get into it. So I go to my friend's house and I go stay the night. I didn't answer the phone all night for him because we was into it. Hang on. It was not my boyfriend. And next you know, he called me the next day. I'm like, hey, what's up? He like, um, I know you're on 29th. Mm -hmm. How you know I'm over here? Yes, I did. Next you know, I hung up on him. About five minutes later, I get a text message. Um, if you want to continue your family locator, then pay $9.99 a month. I'm like, this man got a tracker on my phone. Do you have a tracker on her phone? You know why? And I'm going to tell the truth. Yes, I did. I Who didn't put no that? tracker on her phone, uh -huh. but here's what happened. You know, this is, out, like I said, after she left home. Listen, a car that I paid seven fifty for, you riding around in it, I went going half. to see, you didn't go half, I paid for it. I but, went half. Uh, riding around it, you going to see other men in a car that I paid seven fifty for, you laying up in the bed talking on my phone uh, with another man that I'm it's paying the phone bill on, and I want to know where you at. I want to know where you at. I want to know where my car at, and I yeah. want to know where that phone at. No. <laughs> Your Honor. Your Honor, first of all, The car was in my name. Yes. I put it in Second your name because I had tickets. I paid all, the money for it. I went half on that car. I, Third of all, don't act like 
shocked you was the only one paying phone bills because I was putting it down just as much as you will. I ain't you saying you wasn't, but the point is, I want to... Don't act like you just gave it to this well, relationship and not did Mr. Glenn has an interesting point of view with respect to, you know, this is my money, I want to know where it's going and what you're doing with it. Ms. Price, were you ever cheating on him? Was, was that guy not a friend? No. Yep. It was a friend. It wasn't even a guy. Here's the thing. Now, I don't mind you having friends and stuff like that. First of all, I did tell her, you know, we don't have male friends. That's un you don't have male friends, I don't have female friends. But I don't mind you going out to Applebee's eating with your friends, but you want to go over and spend a night, two or three nights, you got your own home, your own food, you got me at home. Why you got to go spend a night over your friend house? Let her be with her, man. You come home and be with your man. Uh, every time my friends came over to the house to hang out with me, he always come there with attitude, you know, they'll say hi to respect him because he the man of the house. So they'll they be like, hi, how you doing, Curtis? No, he'll didn't. look at them mugs and start mumbling. What you mumbling for? You making them feel uncomfortable. Because I, you know what? Ms. Stewart, do you feel uncomfortable in their home? Yes, something wrong with that man, I'm telling you. <laughs> at first it was good, uh -huh. it was okay. Then that man, he started doing some crazy stuff. She started calling me like, no, nah, no, nah, he got a track device on me. I'm like, oh, the no. was in his name. Next thing you know, this is after we broke up. Um, I'm talking to one of my male friends on the phone. Next, you know, he click over like, yeah, your husband named Curtis. I said, how did he get your number? You know why, you Honor, I'm going to tell you why. Because, you know what, first of all, we broke up. <laughs> yes, he left me. But here's the thing, I'm a good man. Went to work, uh, I went to school, took care of the family, took care of my baby and stuff like that. And then you're going to up and leave me. And I did call the man on the phone. You know why? Because you got some young man laying in my bed, eating my food, watching my TV stuff. I done paid money for living in my house and here. Yours. I'm somewhere living, living somewhere else with one of my Yours. family members. After you done, just because you done left me and uh, uh, less than a month later, you up laid up with some young man in my house. Yes, I did call the man. I want to know who he is. We got to meet and talk about this. <laughs> When Divorce Court continues, is marital bliss all just a matter of throwing a good party? Went out and did what a man do, borrowed the money, scuffled and scraped, and had our hotel party anyway. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter, at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Curtis Sloan Glenn, who claims that there's no pleasing his wife, Patrice. But did Curtis have a clue in advance what he was in for? My sister, she got an attitude problem, yes, that's so you know. We didn't do that before. He got out on that one knee and asked to marry her. He's a big liar. He can make aliens believe in Jesus. He no, got this mouthpiece on him. I'm going to tell you something. I ain't know. He's you know why she say liar. I'm a liar? Can I tell you why she say I'm a why liar? Why did she say you I'm going to tell you why she say I'm a liar. Because you know what? I try to do anything in my power to please this lady, no matter what it is, right? And if I can't do it to please her, then you know what I tell her? You know, I might tell her something different. I'm going to be honest a with lie. you. I might, it might be a little white lie because I don't want her to fly off the handle. I, you know, I'm going to tell you why. I was supposed to have this lady. She wanted a hotel party at the hotel. Right. I didn't have enough money to have a party at the hotel, so what I did when I bought a whole bunch of stuff was going to have her party at the house. I bought balloons, stuff. I bought food, <laughs> uh, invited people over, was going to surprise her. When she got to the house, she blew up. She busted balloons, because I had threw to come everything out around, she busted that balloons. That my brother them gave him the food. money. S -s 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 he threw you a party and you came in and tore it up? This man because is... This man is lying to you, Your Honor. Will you tell me what happened at the party? This what happened. It was my 21st birthday. And we supposed to throw a party at the hotel, which we did. This man lied and said that he bought all the stuff, but really my brother and them bought it. My brother and them gave him the money to buy it. Uh -huh. It was not nothing torn up. She was there. We was at the hotel well, having a good time. What did you do? You I ain't do nothing. You know what I'm gonna tell you? We did have a hotel party, and her brother did them give me the money to buy stuff. You know why? Because after I found out, after she got all upset, she didn't want a house party. I went out and borrowed the money from her brother and them to buy all this stuff and pay them back, and I did it behind her back because if I knew that if she found out, they she'd be all gift. upset. So they what I did was, gift. after she got all upset with it, I, I went, I went out and did what a man do: borrowed the money, scuffled and scraped, and had her hotel party anyway. After she got so all crazy. So did he try to hold a party for you at home? You were so mad about it, he had to go hustle up some money and go to a hotel and have a party? That didn't even happen. That didn't even happen. Oh, that didn't even happen. Oh, Stewart, my Stewart, my didn't happen. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you. My sister, she got an attitude problem, yes, that's so you know. But that he didn't do that before. Crazy. He got out on that one knee and asked to marry her. 
And her attitude, you know, yeah, she did get an attitude because why would you tell her you was gonna do something and you didn't do it? Why would you tell her you got this money, you gonna have this money for this and this, and now, oh, all of a sudden, our brothers gotta come out the woodlots and she gotta get the money that they was gonna get her as a present is going on some dollar so stuff. And then you ain't even go out and get some real pieces. You go get some oven top pieces. We gotta make okay, it, bring it but to can the can I ask you a question? No, don't they, how we go. Don't these people no. understand that you have plans on doing stuff, but if a bill come up, you got to pay it and do what you can do with the no, rest of the money? No, no don't they understand that? If we went to the hotel with me and him, I bet you he would've came up with the money and we would've I went. Would've, I would've came up with, you, you know what, anything you ever wanted, I gave, I would've came up, I came up with it anyway, didn't I? After you flew off the handle, I came up that with it anyway. He did, didn't he? He came up with it. He yeah, came up know. with it. When Divorce Court continues, did Curtis make a move on one of Patrice's friends? Your husband, the way he looked at me, he's starting to call my phone and he's starting to text me saying how beautiful I look today. Divorce Court returns with the case of Curtis Sloan Glenn and Patrice Price, who are in court today to call it quits on their three-year marriage. Thank you very much, Ms. Stewart. You were very, very helpful. Have a seat. <laughs> Why don't you tell me what was the final straw for you? Because you tried to mess with one of my friends. That's not tell the me truth. about I that. I cannot believe she, you. Um, she lied. She used to come over my house all the time. And then one day she texted me at the blue and she was like, um, I don't feel comfortable over your house. I'm like, dang, is it me? What's wrong? Why you don't feel comfortable? She like, your husband, the way he looked at me, he's starting to call my phone and he's starting to text me saying how beautiful I look today and all this and all that. She came over and she showed me the text message. That was a shot right there. I can't do it no more. Were you texting a friend of her? I was not her texting a friend of her. This friend that she talking about, she probably done said this about a hundred other men. And she know it just as well as I know it. That was a lie. But just the same as I told her, your friend told you this, you need to come and talk to me and we need to talk about this. But instead, she do like she always do, fly off the handle, get I physical. Want it, want I did I said, I'm not talk to him. And what did he say? He keep denying it. He lying. But I see the text message. How can you deny and I see the proof right here? Okay. Listen, let me explain something to you. I did not do that. But you know what? He gonna go at at that point, if I did, you couldn't get mad at me because of the way that you act, man, the things that you do, the stuff if that you I done, did, done to you me. If I did, you couldn't get mad at me. I, 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 I heard it. I heard it. I, I got did you. say I got that, you. but yeah, I yeah, didn't. Right, I'm being yeah. honest. Honestly, you did do it, didn't you? No, I didn't. Honestly, I'm not going to. You know what? I've been taught not to say stuff about something that I didn't do and then say I did it. I did not do it. It was a lie. Honestly. So it was you, a lie. all of the things that she says that you did that looked like they were cheating. None of them happened. No, I didn't cheat. You were faithful throughout the course of the relationship. I was faithful relationship. throughout the course of our relationship. I did not cheat on this lady. I, okay. I've never but, cheated. Uh, why don't you tell me about the 1996 uh, Pontiac? After, uh, after we broke up and stuff like that, you know, I got the car fixed because the car was broke down. She asked me, could she use the car? I said, okay, we broke up. We got to come to some type of agreement. She takes the car and, mind you, she living somewhere and I'm living somewhere else. I can't even get a ride to my doctor's appointment. She got the car, keeps the car. I was a man, so I told her, you can, you can have the car. You can, I'm going to leave you with the house and stuff like that because you got my daughter. But after I seen that she wasn't taking, uh, doing right by it and just letting the car go to waste and letting everybody drive it and tear it up, I went, the car broke down somewhere uh, 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 over there by the house. I went and picked it up, and I tried to fix the car and stuff like that, but it was just gone. It gotcha. was through. So they, they towed the car, and it was done. But I didn't get any use out of the car. I'm talking about for about four or five months uh, straight. I understand. I understand. I hear exactly what you're saying. Mr. Glenn, Ms. Price, you could have made it work if you, I think if you had been a little older and a little less chaotic, it could have worked. You said one thing that resolved the entire issue. You said, I was going to leave the car with you because you've got my daughter. Mm -hmm. It was a good thing to do. It's also a dispositive thing. You gave her the car. What she did with it once you did, made you mad, so you want half of it, but you can't do that. You gave her the car, she used it, that's what it was, so I can't give you any recovery. I wish you the best of luck. I hope you guys do a good job co-parenting that child and relax, you know, you know, go, go to yoga, something. <laughs> Calm down, be cool. There will be no reco recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. All right. Parties may leave the courtroom. Patrice and Curtis have continued to live apart and definitely are not getting back together. Patrice says that coming to the show has helped them argue less and they now have a more cordial relationship. She also says Curtis has continued to be there for their daughter. 